So welcome to the last part of today's lecture. So just to kind of recap where we are, we're trying to diagonalize this matrix here. We've computed the algebraic uh, multiplicity of each of our eigenvalues. For lambda equals zero, we found that the eigenspace uh, is two dimensional. So the geometric multiplicity is equal to the algebraic multiplicity, that's good. And then the same thing for the other eigenvalue for negative two, the geometric multiplicity is equal to the algebraic multiplicity. We can diagonalize. We found a basis for all the eigenspaces. And now just to wrap up, the diagonalization is just putting all things into the correct spot. And here's the thing that we want to pay attention to. So we have, we want to make a, a square matrix, but we only have two eigenvalues. But if we count, count things correctly with the correct multiplicity, then we can actually make a, a matrix of the right size. Because our, our eigenvalue zero appears twice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put, or it has algebraic multiplicity twice. So we're gonna put it down the diagonal matrix twice. And two has algebraic multiplicity once. So we're only gonna put it on the diagonal once. Okay, and I'll fill up the rest of the matrix here with zeros. And let, let me just put a comment here, is since zero has algebraic, and maybe I should put it like this, since lambda equals zero has algebraic multiplicity two, put it on the diagonal two times. So if the algebraic multiplicity had been say seven, you would you would obviously need a larger matrix, but you would have zero showing up seven times. So you put each eigenvalue still on the diagonal, but you repeat it the number of times of the eigen uh, the algebraic multiplicity, and then p. Oops, I didn't want that one. Oops, go to the end. I lost my spot here. Sorry about that. Uh, there we go. So P, now what you want to do is because the algebraic multiplicity is two and the geometric multiplicity is two, what you want to do is put the basis for the eigenspace in the corresponding columns. So here we would have uh, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Okay, so this is the basis for the eigen space of lambda equals zero. So notice I'm trying to keep the columns in the same order. And then the, in the last column, I want to put the eigens, uh, the basis for the column space uh, corresponding to the eigenvalue two. So I have one, negative one, three, and uh, negative one, three, and one. And so you want to, and maybe I want to put this here, you know, same order as D. And so you could actually mix things up. I could have put the two in the middle and moved the zero down here. So I would have to make the corresponding swaps in the in the columns here. So that actually completes this example. So the matrix A is equal to this matrix P times this matrix D times the inverse of the matrix P, which we, we're not, usually we don't calculate uh, calculate what that is because it adds more work uh, to the calculation. Okay, so a couple of things I just wanna mention before we wrap up today, uh, some things about the algebraic multiplicity. So if you have an n by n uh, matrix with distinct eigenvalues lambda one to lambda r, and if mi is the algebraic multiplicity of lambda i, then one thing that is true is that the sum of the multiplicities will be equal to the size of the matrix or the order of the matrix. And that allows us to answer kind of questions like this. Say that I tell you, here's a matrix and it has a characteristic equation given by lambda squared, one minus lambda, two minus lambda raised to the power of three. And so one question we could ask is what is the size of A? And so the answer to the first part is pretty straightforward. It just follows from what I said above is you're just taking the, all the multiplicities and you're summing them up. So the multiplicity of zero is two. The multiplicity of one is one. The multiplicity of two is three. So 
A is a six by six matrix. So I, I haven't even seen A, but I know that this is the characteristic equation. It has to be uh, a six by six matrix. And another question we can now ask is how big can the eigenspace of lambda equal two be? And what we know is from the fact that the geometric multiplicity is bounded by the algebraic multiplicity, we know that the dimension of the null space of A minus two uh, I six is less than or equal to three. Now, in some ways, this ends our discussion of diagonalization, but you'll notice that you know there are going to be matrices that are di not diagonalizable. We actually had one example going way back over here. This matrix here was not diagonalizable because the geometric multiplicity of one of its eigenvalues did not equal its algebraic multiplicity. So even though you can't diagonalize it, Okay, there is something out there that you can do, and I'm just going to mention it just because it may come up in one of your future courses, is even though you can't diagonalize it, you can almost diagonalize it using what's called the Jordan form. And in the Jordan form, in the middle matrix, it's not necessarily a diagonal matrix like here. You're also allowed a couple entries, other entries off the diagonal not to be zero, although the middle matrix is still almost diagonal. And that's called the Jordan form. But again, we're not going to discuss that in this class. So there's a lot of kind of new ideas in today's lecture. Uh, one of them is the, the the notion of algebraic and geometric multiplicity. And then we have this diagonalization theorem, which relates algebraic and geometric multiplicity to diagonalization. So that finishes our discussion on diagonalization. Uh, in the next class lecture, we're going to talk about eigenvectors and its connections to linear transformations. Okay, have a great day.